In this video, I'm going to talk about the focal point of a convex lens and um, using that, using the law of refraction to see if we can figure out where the focal point will be, at least roughly. So here we're going to imagine that we have a lens convex, so remember that's not concave, that's the one that sticks out in the middle, not caves in. And if we take the front surface of the lens and we imagine making a giant circle out of it, then we say the center of that lens is the center of curvature C, and then that's going to let us define our optic axis well. Something like that. Ah, I wanted the straight line, it didn't happen, just a second. Let's try that again. Uh, I'm going to try that one more time here. Something like that. And that gets us a nice optic axis here. Okay. And remember the definition of a focal point is where parallel to optic axis rays meet. Okay, so imagine I have some, I'm only going to do a couple here, but a couple parallel rays coming in. Just like that. Oh, I didn't get my arrow there and again, sorry, hold on. There we go, a couple parallel rays coming in. Where are those two parallel rays going to bend to? So to look at this more carefully, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the mirrors. I'm going to take a little section here and I'm going to blow it up so that I can look at it a little bit more carefully. I'm going to call this A. Now in A, on the, we're at a part on the lens that goes out like that on the front surface and then the back surface comes down like that. Uh, I can do the back surface better. Hold on. There we go. Let's try that again. Back surface comes kind of like that. Now. This ray is coming in parallel, so it's coming in flat. And if we imagine this surface, the normal to this surface is right about here. Something like that. The index of refraction outside the lens is 1. Inside the lens, we're going to assume it's a glass lens. So I'll make it 1.5. And then back outside the lens here is back to 1. So since we're going from our index of refraction is going up on this surface, that means that this angle of incidence is going to be smaller as an angle of reflection, or we're going to bend towards that normal. And what we can see here is a little bit this parallel beam is starting to bend back down towards the optic axis. Now on the secondary surface, that same ray is going to come in. This time, the normal is off on this angle. And here we're going from an index of refraction that's high to low. So the index of refraction is going down. So n is going, sorry, n was going up here. That meant the angle went down. And here, n is going down. So that means our angle is going to go up. So that means that this angle of incidence on the way out here is going to get even bigger. And as a result, this angle of refraction is going to be bigger than the angle of incidence. Both of those diffractions serve to do the same thing. Both of them bent the ray towards the optic axis. Keep in mind this is all up at point A here. What that means is that this ray in general is going to point down after both refractions at both surfaces. Both refractions angle the ray a little bit further down than it was in the first place. Let's do the same thing at B. Maybe seeing it again will help. So here's B. And at B we have the part of the lens that looks like this. It's coming in like that, and then it's coming up like that. And I'm going to separate them out a little bit more so I have a little bit more space to work with. So the ray is coming in parallel. The normal to this surface is something like this. And here we're going from an index of refraction of 1 to an index of refraction of 1.5. So the index is going up 1 to 1.5, so the angle must go down. So that means this angle, which is becoming 
this angle has to get smaller, or the ray has to bend up towards the center, towards the optic axis. Same thing, now we have a ray coming in. It's already bent upwards a little bit, back towards the optic axis a little bit. The normal to this surface is something like this. And here, we're going from an n equals 1.5 to an n equals 1. This is from inside the second surface of the lens to the outside. So this index of refraction is going down, causing the angle to go up. So when you go to bend away from that normal, making this angle, theta r, bigger than theta i, again the result is that you're bending up towards the optic axis. Again, roughly, if we were to put this ray on, it might look something like that. And if we did this properly and carefully with all our angles and using that Snell's law that I talked about but didn't really get into detail about, what we would find is that all these rays come to a common point called the focal point. These are real rays of light coming in to form a real focal point. And so what we get here is that for a convex lens, we get a real focal point that is in between the lens and the center of curvature. Now when we did this for mirrors, we said that it was exactly halfway in between. But there's more factors going on with lenses. Assuming the lens is glass and you have a refractive index of 1.5, but you can make lenses out of other materials, which is going to change where that focal point is slightly. Also, it depends if the, if the curvature of the front surface is the same as the curvature of the back surface. So there's a lot more factors that go into figuring out exactly where the focal point of a convex lens would be. But in general, we can see that it is still somewhere around halfway in between the center of curvature of the lens and the, and the lens itself. So that's how you figure out the, um, where the focal point is for a convex lens. Uh, in the next video coming up, I'll do where the focal point is for a concave lens.